Hi, I'm Skip Nipper. Welcome to my podcast, where I tell you about Nashville's great baseball history and traditions. Shot to write a one-hop liner. Certainly about its past, especially about Tom Wilson Park, Herschel Greer Stadium, Sulphur Dale, but also a little bit about its present and future, too. Yes, he can. It makes the waist-high catch. And I introduce you to players, coaches, and other fans and their love for everything baseball. A high fly ball down the right field corner going way back. And hits a lead off home run. Well, we've closed out 2023. I hope you would think that that was a good year for you. Maybe not. I know there are slings and arrows that come our way in the course of a year. To me, family is everything. We've been blessed. There are a few ups and downs with family members, but hey, you know, we all love each other. We've gathered together at Thanksgiving and Christmas, enjoyed each other's company and good food, obviously, and just the things that families do. And now we're swinging into a new year. Can you believe it? 2024. I'm anticipating a good year. I, I'm excited about 2024 because good things can happen and it pays to be happy and it pays to uh, look forward to things and be positive. I'm going to take on a new project and I need your help this year. I don't know the time frame exactly, but I want to start right away. You may remember that I published a top 10 most influential people in Nashville baseball history. I'm still grateful to Mike Organ for helping me with that because he published it in the newspaper and I received many, many requests for names, nominations, if you will. And I'm going to read that top 10 list to you. I'm not going to go into the detail because I think you'll recognize these. And if you don't, you certainly shoot me an email and, and let me know. But because I'm going to add to this in a different way, but this is the number one through 10 of who I consider the top 10 most influential people in national baseball history. Some you'll recognize. I think most of them you will. And if you don't, once again, I may actually run into a little bit of a description of each of these names. I think no one needs to be introduced to Larry Schmidt, the founder of the Nashville Sounds, former Vanderbilt baseball coach, continues to be a good friend. And I enjoy sitting down with, with at a meal with him and others on an ongoing basis. And I just learned so much from him. I just soak it in. Number two is Tim Corbin, the head coach at Vanderbilt. I think he's done a lot to bring attention to the college game in Nashville as college baseball has grown. Number three is Larry Gilbert, who was the manager and general manager of the Nashville Vols when he came to Nashville for the 1939 season and coached for 10 years. He was uh, loved by everybody, and he developed so much talent, and he won games, I think, uh, in his 25-year minor league career with New Orleans and Nashville, he won over 2,000 games. Fred Russell was my number four from the Nashville Banner, the great sports editor, a protege of Grantland Rice, who was the dean of American sports writers. And Fred Russell did so much. I think he did so much with all sports, but I think he had a particular love for baseball. Number five is Ken Dugan, who was the head coach of the Lipscomb Bisons for so many years. And what a great influence he was on not only players, but uh, students of the game and historians too. Number six, Tom Wilson is not a name you may recognize. He's the father of Negro Leagues baseball in Nashville, in my opinion. He purchased the Nashville Standard Giants and turned them into a Negro League team called the Nashville Elite Giants. It's spelled E-L-I-T-E, but it's pronounced not elite, but Elite Giants. They ended up in Baltimore. But he had a great eye for talent. Jim Gillum was one of his players that he brought in, and uh, Butch McCord, and so many others. Number seven was Herschel Greer, who was the president of Vols Incorporated. And you may remember that his family gave money to Larry Schmidt to build a baseball stadium in Nashville, as long as it would be called Herschel Greer Stadium. And without that stadium, things would not have been the same for the Nashville Sounds or professional baseball in Nashville. Now, my number eight, I know, you may not know him, but his name is Willie White. My dad always called him the, he held the keys of Sulphurdale. He was always there. And when the balls or the some of the Negro Leagues teams were not playing there, he would let any of the kids come in and play. And they would actually do batting practice sometimes and chase balls to the outfield during batting practice for the Vols and other teams. My number nine was Grantland Rice, a sports writer with the Nashville Tennessean, who actually dubbed Athletic Park a new name, Sulphurdale. And he gave a new name to the Nashville Baseball Club in 1908, which was Volunteers. And number 10, it's kind of a sentimental choice for me, but I think rightfully so, Harry Warhorse Rogers, 
founded the Nashville Old Timers Baseball Association in 1938, continuing to this day. And uh, I think the 86th banquet for the Nashville Old Timers is January the 14th, where their speaker is going to be Ken Griffey Sr. But over the years, the scholarships have been provided and money has been raised to give to programs that need a helping hand to rebuild a dugout or mend the fence, that kind of a thing. So that's my top 10. But now let me give you some names that there, I can't cover them all, but I want you to consider these names and the caliber of these players. Uh, some of them, once again, you'll recognize, but I thought maybe that this may be a group that either should, should have been in that top 10. I've heard people tell me that I made a mistake or two on my top 10. Well, it was a personal choice. However, all names are open, and as I go along here, consider these names because you may, may ring a bell with you, and some of them you may never have never heard of before, but there are more names than the top 10 that I gave. One is Butch McCord, who was a Negro League and minor league player for the Nashville Black Vols, the Nashville Cubs, the Baltimore Elite Giants, later joining organized baseball and won two silver gloves as the best first baseman in the minors. That's pretty good. He supported the building of a baseball field at Tennessee State and was instrumental in getting Negro League players into the MLB pension fund. Another one is Jim Turner, born in Antioch. He was the New York Yankees pitching coach for Casey Stengel when they won five World Series. And in 1960, he became Nashville Vols manager for one season, then moved to the Cincinnati Reds as pitching coach from 61 through 65, and rejoined the Yankees as pitching coach from 1966 to 1973. Here's a name I know you're not going to know. Will C. Bryan was an organizer of Nashville's first pro team in the fall of 1884. That's how far professional baseball goes back in Nashville. And he helped organize the Southern League the next season. He was Nashville's first manager in 1885, uh, the team was known as Americans, and Brian later helped organize the Western League. He won the Medal of Honor for Extraordinary Heroism during the 1876 in Indian-U.S. Army conflict. Jimmy Stewart was a beloved coach uh, and regional director of the Amateur Bay Ruth League and directed the Shuteeks travel baseball uh, teams in Nashville. Joey Hale, a local coach, led Goodlesville Little League to the U.S. Championship in 2012. And here's another name that, that bears uh, calling out. His name was Newt Fisher, native Nashville, played one game for Nashville in 1893, three years in Minneapolis, 1898 to 1900, and a few games in 1898 with Philadelphia in the National League. But his importance for Nashville, he was born here, but he was instrumental in forming the Southern Association. They met in 1900 for a new league to begin in 1901, and he managed until 1905 for five years. His teams won the first two Southern Association pennants in 1901 and 1902, and he was a team owner until 1905 and was involved in the development of Nashville's Athletic Park, which over the years became Sulphurdale. Here's another name, Faye Murray, F-A-Y, Murray. After purchasing the Nashville Vols in 1931, he brought Larry Gilbert to Nashville in 1939, and it was a great accomplishment for him to lure Larry Gilbert from New Orleans. Jimmy Hamilton, another name you may not know, but he was very instrumental in those early years of Nashville Vols baseball. He was manager and co-owner of the Vols from 1923 to 1928. He was a right-hand man to Faye Murray and had a strong relationship with the Brooklyn Dodgers and served as a scout. And one of the players I loved was Dick Sisler. He was the player manager for the Nashville Vols in 1957 through 1959. He also led the charge in selling shares of Vols Incorporated stock to the public to keep pro baseball in Nashville. And you may not know, he was a son of a Hall of Famer, George Sisler, and in 1950, Dick Sisler hit a home run for the Philadelphia Whiz Kids to seal the National League pennant and take the Phillies to the World Series. Here's another name that, uh, that bears more uh, influence than, than we sometimes give him, Sue Bridgeforth, S-O-O, -O, Bridgeforth. 
He owned the New Era Club and sponsored the New Era Giants, and he bought his first Negro League team, the Baltimore Elite Giants, in the 1950s and later owned the Nashville Stars along with several other teams. was a big influence on the uh, baseball in the black community. George Digby was a longtime major league scout for the Boston Red Sox who lived in the Nashville area. And so many of these players like Tommy Bolton and Charlie Mitchell and John Mitchell that signed with the Boston Red Sox, Bobby Tillman, were scouted by George Digby. Harold Buster Boguski. Did everybody love Buster Boguski or what? He was a standout player at Cumberland High School and local amateur leagues and spent three years in the Army after coming out in 1946, accepted an invitation to the Vol Spring Training before playing at Hopkinsville in the Kitty League for one season. But in 1947, he made the Vols roster, played through 1953, and later served 32 years as a Metro Councilman. And many of us will remember that he was a sporting goods salesman also. Raymond Johnson was a name you'll recognize, a Tennessean sports editor who also served as commissioner of, the, of several of the city's amateur baseball leagues through the 50s and 60s. Now here's one of my favorites too. Turkey Stearns is in the National Baseball Hall of Fame. He was born in Nashville, attended Pearl High School. He played Negro League ball for the Detroit Stars and the Chicago American Giants and he got his start with the Nashville Standard Giants in 1920. He was known for hitting a lot of home runs. And I've, been, I've met uh, Roz and um, uh, Joyce, his daughters, and they have a, he has a granddaughter who's now doing a podcast with ABC News about those topics that are, have been left off the table for so many years. Uh, Ivy Rose. And uh, I'm always grateful to talk to them. They're, they're wonderful people, and they're proud of their dad, Turkey Stearns. Wayne Garland. Wayne Garland was a Cone High School pitching star, signed a 10-year contract with the Cleveland Indians for $2.3 million after a 20.7, and 7 season with Baltimore in 1976. Now, that was the first multi-million dollar contract for a professional baseball player, as I remember. There are stories galore about Wayne Garland pitching. Farrell Owens, another favorite of mine, was a standout player also at Cone High School and Lipscomb. And he was the first general manager of the Nashville Sounds and a past president of old timers. He passed away a few years ago, and I always said he was the eyes and ears of old timers baseball. And we miss him a lot. George Leonard, what a great writer he was. He was a Nashville banner sports writer who later became senior editor of Athlon Sports. He co-authored a little booklet with Fred Russell called Vol Feats 1901-1950, through which was a history of the Nashville Vols. Teddy Acklin, Teddy owned the Del Morocco Club and the Morocco Stars barnstorming team and started the Nashville Stars in the late 1940s. Jim Zapp was one of those players who played for him. He was a Negro League player who hit a home run in Kansas City that was key in the Birmingham Black Barons winning the series that gave them a berth in the 1948 Negro Leagues World Series. George Archie, a former Major League first baseman with the Washington Senators and St. Louis Browns, he became a manager of local amateur teams, particularly Nashville Bridge Company, the Bricko, and Guarantee Mortgage. He was also an assistant with the Nashville Vols, well-loved, and also with the Nashville Pickers. You may remember that club. Johnny Beasley was a star pitcher with the National League champion St. Louis Cardinals in the 1942 World Series, and he came back to Nashville when his career was over and played semi-pro ball in the area. Another personal favorite is R.A. Dickey. He was the 2012 Cy Young Award winner with the New York Mets, also played with the Atlanta Braves, Toronto Blue Jays, Minnesota Twins, Texas Rangers, and Seattle Mariners. And he played with the Nashville Sounds, too. Frank Ward. How about Frank Ward? Was instrumental in Nashville's new ballpark, becoming a reality, and took the Nashville Sounds franchise to new heights with entertainment value and top attendance. And I mentioned earlier, Jim Gillum, he became the 1953 National League Rookie of the Year. He was born in Nashville. He displaced Jackie Robinson at second base, 
and a, he was a two-time All-Star. His number 19 was retired after his death. It's the only Dodgers number retired for a player not in the Hall of Fame. Dave Witten was a well-beloved baseball coach at Belmont, posted a final career record of 674 and 452, a five-time conference coach of the year, elected into the Tennessee Baseball Coaches Association Hall of Fame in 1998, and in January 2000 was named Mr. Baseball by the Nashville Old Timers Association. He was also an integral caretaker of Shelby Park, home of Belmont Baseball, through the move to E.S. Rose Park, where they call their home field now. And here's one that's well-loved, Jack Lavender. He was awarded the title of Mr. Baseball in 1991 by the Old Timers. He was the one and only administrator of Twitty City Baseball since its organization in 1981, and he made Seven Oaks Park one of the finest in the area and was honored in 1996 by having the field dedicated in his name. Jack Lavender Field. Well, now there's just a few. I, I mean, there are so many, and there are no parameters to this. There just needs to be some kind of a national baseball connection. If you'd like to let me know who you think should belong in a baseball in Nashville Hall of Fame, you just have to send me an email, 262 downright at gmail.com. And then if you can go to baseballinnashville.com, or you can also get there by sulfordale.com, it takes you to the same website. There's a form there that you could fill out and send to me, include your email address, and you could put as many names as, the, as you want to. I just need to know what their connection is to Nashville baseball. You need to give me some kind of a description and not just put names, because I really can't just consider names. But we'll tabulate those throughout the year, maybe have a couple of different uh, times when we'll, we'll induct uh, maybe something that we can do online. I don't know. We'll figure something out. But I just need some help with you with that. And if you're listening to my podcast or following me along on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn, you know, you'll be able to get in get some of this information to me. I know. And we'll just accumulate those. We'll have some fun, but we'll give them some honor for some of the credible things that they have done in their baseball careers. Remember, it can be a little league coach, it can be a player, an associate, a family friend, it can be anybody that you like. But I'm going to see how many names that we can come up with that deserve to be in a Nashville Baseball Hall of Fame. Just be sure to go to baseballinnashville.com or sulfordale.com. And I wish you the best for 2024. I'm always available to help you if I can, if, any, if there's anything I can ever do for you. If you can listen to my podcast, I can certainly help you out. If you have a question or if you have a comment, certainly send those my way. Happy New Year.